Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. Today I want to demonstrate something because people have asked me this to be quite honest and I've not actually tried this so we'll see whether I was right or whether I was wrong and the same applies to people who commented. So people ask me why I don't use chip quick. This is a low melt solder when I'm desoldering things like MOSFETs and HDMI connectors and those sort of things. And to be quite honest, I said I do have it. I tried it once, I've used this once, but that was like probably back in 26, no, maybe 2018, something like that when I had this. And I haven't used it since because I effectively use normal solder, leaded solder. This is mechanic, you can see it there. So this is 6330 tin lead solder, okay, regular leaded solder basically. And this is the chip quick. And the difference is the cost. So I can buy an entire 150 gram roll of this for less than I can buy one little pack of this. And I use them both in the same way. So I'm adding leaded solder to the unleaded solder on the board, therefore forming an alloy between the two metals and reducing the melting point, which means when I use hot air to remove the components, I don't need to put as much heat in. That's basically what I'm doing. The idea behind the chip quick is that it melts at a much lower temperature than normal when it's solder. But the downsides I mentioned is it's very expensive in comparison. So to answer the question, why do I not use chip quick? The reason is because I'm a cheapskate. Basically, I use the leaded solder and I find that works for me. But I've never made a comparison between the two. I had a look on YouTube, of course, and I found Phil, the coder. I know quite a lot of you have seen his channel. And he was comparing the chip quick with a couple of three other cheap brands of low melt solder. But what he wasn't doing was comparing it with normal El Cheapo leaded solder. And I didn't see anybody else who was, maybe I missed it. So I thought today, let's try it. I can't quite do this how Phil did it because he was just testing on HDMI connectors. He had four identical boards. I don't quite have that. So maybe this is not quite so good a comparison between the two, but we'll see. So I have here an old graphics card. It has four RAM chips on. These are a good example of a multi-pin chip. You may want to desolder, so we can try those. I'll use chip quick on one and regular unleaded solder on the other, and we'll test A, how long did it take to desolder, B, did we damage any tracks or pads, and C, did we knock off any other surrounding components by accident okay i'll remove one first using the chip quick and then i'll put this on one side we'll cool it down so i have my temperature meter and what i can do is i can make sure the board is back down to the original temperature and then we can use the leaded solder or vice versa depending which way i feel like doing it so i can just show you now the ambient temperature in my workshop here is about 29 degrees you can see okay there's no heating in the workshop in fact there's no heating in the shopping center at all or for that matter there is no aircon in the shopping center but there is in my workshop so that temperature may drop a little bit as the morning moves on but it's not going to change drastically so we can get a pretty good comparative test from using that so we're going to use that I'm then going to try what Phil was doing. I have an old TV board here. It has two HDMI connectors. One's already been removed, salvaged for some other job. So we'll do the same on that one with the regular leaded solder, one with the chip quick, and we'll see how that goes. I'll do exactly the same thing. So I'll measure the temperature of the board in between so we know we have a good comparison. And then lastly, I found this line around. This is an old laptop board. There's no HDMIs on here, but I have a couple of USBs down here, so they're a little bit hefty. So let's try removing those again. We'll make a comparison between the two. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get on with it. 
I'm going to use the same soldering iron for all these tests. So this is my KSGR T12. It has a BC3 tip in, which is a nice chunky one. So we'll use this. I can get quite good heat transfer, and this is the tip I normally use. I'm going to use the Amtech NC559 ASM Flux. This is almost certainly knockoff or a copy, but it works very well. I get this from AliExpress, five tubes for less than 10 euros. So that's what I normally use. But the chip quick I notice comes with its own flux. So to give it the best chance, I'm gonna use the flux that came with it, that one, okay? That's what they sent with it. So that's what I'm gonna use with it. I use an old lid off a satellite receiver originally. I've used this just so I don't burn my bench. You see it's actually bent, yeah. So when I rest the board or something on it, it's not making particularly good contact with it. It's not acting as a heat sink as such. This is what I normally use. And to be quite honest, I'm gonna use the same with everything again as well. So that shouldn't really have any effect. If I didn't use this, I'd probably burn the mat on the desk. And the hot air I'm using is my Quick 861DW, set to 450 degrees centigrade and to the maximum airflow. So again, we're gonna use exactly the same for all of these tests. So I'll go for, well, eeny, meeny, miny, whatever, yeah. I'll just go for one of these. I mean, they look to be the same, the same components around them, yeah. Let's remember what there was because I'm interested to see if any of this lot goes missing. Okay, I'll add the flux. I'll actually use the regular leaded solder first because this is what I'm used to working with. So it gives you a good idea of how I can normally do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and add solder to all the pins. The idea is I'm going to try and bridge all the pins together. Okay, kind of went off a little bit there. I'll see if I can bridge all the pins together, but it's not quite enough solder. Here we go again. I think I have them that time. And the same on the other side. Being right handed, I'm gonna do it this way. Same thing. I think I have them all on that one. Yeah, looks like it's all just about. Okay. If there's an odd one that isn't soldered, well, that's how I normally do it, so nothing different there. So what I'll do is I'll remove this. So I'm not using a preheater, the board's just at the temperature it is from that bit of soldering. And I'm gonna to try to remove this chip. I'll time this, not during the recording, but when I'm editing up this video, so we'll see how long this takes. I think it was fairly clear from what I was saying at the beginning, but I will just reiterate, I was not sent this or the solder or anything else for free. I paid for this myself. I've had it for some years. And the other solder, this is the one that I always use on my videos. Again, I pay for it. The same applies with the flux and everything else, okay? So let's see how this goes. Hot air is up to temperature. It's coming, I just need to get a hold of it, and it's off. 
Okay. I normally clean the board up while it's hot, so we'll do that. So just a bit of braid and just clear the excess solder. I won't try and prepare that for refitting, I've just removed the excess solder and we'll do the same with the chip quick as well and then we can have a look under the microscope. So that's the first one done. I'll put this board on one side now so it can cool down and we can check that with the temperature meter when we finished. It would have been nice to see what temperature it got up to, I didn't do that so on the other ones I will actually attach a thermocouple near to the components and see how hot I am getting these and again that might be a good comparison okay we're ready to go I find these can be a bit difficult to remove with the tweezers sometimes sometimes I have to get hold of them with the long nose pliers so we will see same hot air you can see the temperature of the board is up slightly from me soldering basically so let's see how this goes Well, I think it looks like the lead. Well, I think it looks like the lead and solder is melting at the back. See. Yeah, we're off. Again, while it's warm, I'll just clean up the soldering a little bit. Okay. So that one's done. Now let's just try the USB connector. So once again we'll add some flux, I'll do the end one because there's nothing to this side of it but once that's removed there'll be nothing to this side of this one so it should give a pretty good comparison. Okay. Okay, leaded solder. With these, you can't really easily get to the pins from this side because they kind of recessed under there. So this I'm gonna do from the back side, shall we say. <laughs> do it from the back side. So again, we have the little metal tab. Only the two at the back actually come through the board. And then there are the four actual pins. Okay, and I'll attach the thermocouple to the other side of the board like I did with the HDMI. So I have the thermocouple there, very close to but not touching the connector or the solder, okay. You can see the 
temperature of the board about 38 again it's warmed up a little bit from the soldering but that seems to be the same for all of these so i think that's uh, relatively constant really between all the tests again i'll try and use the tweezers but i may have to use the pliers you guys can keep your eye on that temperature as well i'm too busy watching what i'm doing but i can review it on the video once i've recorded okay Well, I'm actually melting the connector on this one, but it's off. All the pins are intact, I just melted the plastic a little bit. This one really doesn't need cleaning up, so I'll let that cool down. Now let's try the same again, but using the chip quick. Here's the first board then. I can just check the board is at, yeah, same sort of temperature pretty much. And this is where I remove the RAM chip. So this is just using my overhead camera on the workbench, not the microscope, but it's good enough for this task. So we can see this is nice and clean. I have a solder bridge there, but that's nothing of a problem, okay. I could clean this up with ISO, but I think you can already see it's nice and clean. All the nearby components are still in place. Now, I didn't use any captain tape, as you notice. I generally don't because that just prevents you getting heat into the board. Okay, if you're using a preheater, it's not so much of a problem, but unless it's something I think is going to melt, I generally don't. And if you do this right, then because the alloy of the lead the lead free solder melts before the lead free on all these nearby components these won't actually desolder there is another issue and that's if when you grab all the chip you slip with it and slide into other components then you may knock them out of place but that is down to technique that is not down to the type of solder you're using okay it's also down to a bit of work as well i mean no matter how much you practice the technique sometimes something slide yeah <laughs> so here's the, basically the equivalent chip that should give us a pretty good comparison so we're going to unsolder this one using chip quick and i'm going to use the fox that came with the chip quick it would be more comparative to use the same fox but to be quite honest if this stuff came with it then i think we should use it they obviously intend you to use this with their low melt solder so there must be i guess some reasoning so we add some of this again it's like a low melt gel it's a little bit hard to apply but it's coming now so i'll just try to get onto all the pins the end of this is wider than the needle i use on my forks that's why it's a little bit trickier to do but not a problem okay I'm happy with that okay let's add some of this chip quick so what you get in the pack is this it's not particularly long it's more brittle than normal solder so it has to snap I have a PC which has snapped off okay the longer piece I'll try use a longer piece so I don't overheat my fingers okay we'll try and use this again it's snapped off so it's a bit difficult to use this stuff and again it just breaks off okay so i'm gonna have to hold this stuff in tweezers let's see how hot it gets so i'll add some of this to the job 
I'm just going to go into the direction where it's easiest for me to work. This way. Okay, let's go. Well, one thing I noticed, you don't have to add very much of it. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to add very much of it. I definitely have to add more of the leaded solder. Okay, that went nicely. I'll put the thermo couple on this time. Sorry, I didn't on the first one, guys. But by measuring the time it takes, that should give us a good indication if there is a difference. I was just distracted there a little while, so you see the temperature is down to 30 actually, the ambient temperature of the workshop. So let's see how well this works. I mean, I would assume, because that's what it's supposed to do, this will melt at a lower temperature. Uh, you can see it. Got tweezers. Yeah, much quicker. As before, I'll just clean up the old solder. Well, I say old solder, the chip quick, which is on the board. Now, that doesn't seem to want to come into the braid. It did, you see that? So, this actually doesn't work as well. That's interesting. It's like it doesn't want to flow as easily, the best way I can put it. Uh, obviously I can add some more forks. But it's okay. And there we have it. Let's try the HDMI. So I've attached the thermocouple again there. You can see where it is. We'll put some of this flux onto the legs. This is where the chassis of the connector solders to the board. Get some more of this chip quick stuff. Okay, it went on there. This is what I'm saying. It's hard to describe about this doesn't flow in the same way that regular leaded solder does. Not that it's a problem, it's just different yeah that's the best i can say it's different folks it also doesn't seem to conduct heat as quickly either which means i can actually hold this with my fingers fairly close to it let's see yeah And I'll do what I did with the other one, which is to add a little bit to the pins this side as well. This is getting extremely short, you can see that, but interestingly, I can actually do it, I think. I'll actually hold it in tweezers though, just to be on the safe side. Well, that kind of like just all melted, yeah.
So it's very difficult to get this to attach to here. I have this temperature on the soldering iron the same as previously. Yeah, that has gone now. Come on. Yep, just about. Once again, more difficult to get down this side, I think. Try more forks. Okay. And the same sort of thing. Just to show the difference, guys, I know this may affect the results very slightly, but I just want to show you the difference between using that and using the leaded solder down here, okay? And you see that flows, yeah? That's with the same flux. Okay, so tricky to get down there. I'm going to let this cool down a little bit to get a comparative result on the desoldering. In fact, as you can see, it's just about 87 degrees at the moment, so we need to wait a little bit. So the temperature is actually down a little bit. It's varying by a degree or so, but it really is only, you know, a couple of degrees. It's not really any big deal. Let's see how this one goes. Okay. So how hot we have to get this to these solders? Well, I can see the solders melting on the pins, but not yet on the frame. Well, that's melted and run away from some of the pins, okay. I think it's starting to come loose, guys. Yeah, I've got it. Just a quick clean up. Okay. And let's go on to the last one. Well, that flowed a little bit better on that one. Yeah, we've got some on that one. We've got some on that one. Oh, this stuff gets everywhere, guys. You can see what's happened. It's gone to the plastic, yeah. I really didn't want that to happen because I wanted to see if I could unsolder this one without 
melting the plastic at all, but I'll see if I can remove it with some tweezers. It definitely does not flow as nicely, I will say that. In fact, I do think I need to say that. I'm sure you guys can see that as the case. Okay. Right, we have some on. Let's see if we can just remove... That's still liquid. Did you see that, guys? How long that stayed liquid for? It's not hot. Just warm. Okay, so that hasn't melted the plastic. So I think we can get a good comparative test here. Board's now at 39, 38, that's just been warming it up, but again, it's fairly subjective, I won't worry too much about that. Let's warm this and let's see if it wants solder. Again, I'm melting the plastic, guys. You can see that. Yeah, I'm doing the same as I did before. I'll hold the hot air a bit further away. Okay, I think I have it. Yeah. Problem I had there is it was hitting the metal work basically, that's why it wouldn't quite come out. Again, that's removed a little bit of melting on the plastic, but not a problem. I mean, you could, could reuse that connector. And that doesn't need cleaning up. Let's have a look at the results then. So these are the two RAM chips I removed. Okay. I made a quick job at cleaning up the pads. As you know, I didn't make a thorough cleaning job of it, but you can see there are no stripped pads or tracks lifted. All the components are in place on both. And the results look the same. I mean, really, there is no difference between the two in the actual result of the work, okay? If any components did come off, I have to say I don't notice them. But there again, you guys have the benefit of going back and look at the previous recording, okay? But it's always good to me. HDMI, so... On this one, this is actually the one that had previously been removed. And you can see there is one pad slightly out of play. But that wasn't part of this experiment, okay? That's that one there. But as I say, that wasn't part of this experiment. So these are the two that we did. This was the one that was done with the leaded solder and this one was done with the chip quick and once again i have to say that there isn't any visible difference in the quality of the work let's just find the connectors they are here i didn't make a note of which was which actually but the good thing is that there's no real difference just wants the solder cleaning off okay that's Fine, and the other one. Same business was the solder cleaning off, but it's fine, just get inside, let's have a look. Yeah, okay, so they are both fine. I'll check inside the other one just to be certain. Yeah, no difference. So, no difference in the results on that one. 
And lastly, the two USBs. Again, the results on the board look the same. So this one was done with the lead free solder. This was done with chip quick. The results are identical. I do know this is the connector which I desoldered with the chip quick. There's a little bit of damage to the plastic here. It's bubbled slightly, but the connector itself it's perfectly usable yeah let's turn it over yeah that's fine these are just normal usb not usb 2 or 3 and the other one i did with the leaded solder a little bit more bubbling on here compared with that one yeah but both again are usable there's no problem with the connectors themselves so we need to sum up chip quick versus regular leaded solder yeah i haven't edited the video so i don't know the exact timings yet but this one was notably faster much faster when removing chips yeah chip quick it does the same job obviously this will only help you where you have chips that don't have pads underneath for example mosfets and such like where there's a pad underneath soldered to the board and things like bgas because you can't get it under there so it's not going to help with that but for things like this and super io it is much faster if you want to reuse the chips i would suggest this is probably the way to do it because you're not needed to get so much heat in there to do the job basically when it comes to things like the usb and the hdmi connectors there wasn't so much difference and i think that's because effectively you have to get enough heat in to heat this metal frame up before the thing will unsolder yeah the results of the time will tell you but from a practical point of view it didn't really feel any different to me and on the two usbs i managed to do a similarly bad job on both of them this probably wouldn't have happened if i held the heat a little bit further away or maybe a little bit cooler but it wouldn't stop you reusing those and if you're removing them because it's broken it really doesn't matter anyway so if you want my opinion, I guess you do want my opinion, because otherwise, why are you watching this? Yeah. But if you want my opinion, this is definitely worth buying. I mean, I would have this in the toolbox. I'd liked the way it desoldered the chip, and it was much quicker. And if I was working somewhere on, for example, a motherboard where I'm near to the RAM slots or the PCIe slots or something like that, and I want to remove a super io i'm going to use this i mean it surprised me just how much better that worked it's not as easy to work with it tends to clump and you saw that in the video but that again was mainly when you were using these on connectors when it comes to connectors i don't think there's that much difference i think i'm actually more comfortable using this because of the way it flows i'm sure you saw that in the video maybe that was just me yeah tell me but that's my experience of it also this is much cheaper than this yeah much cheaper so yes have it keep it in the toolbox use it when you really need to use it if you don't have it to be quite honest use this and the results were the same yeah we can't get around the fact that doing those experiments that the actual result what the board looked like afterwards was exactly the same yeah so to those of you who asked why do i not use chip quick because this works just as well but i do accept there would be the odd occasion when i'm better using that comments guys hope you enjoyed that and i look forward to seeing you all soon on another word electronics repair video ciao for now